My streaming slash capture PC that I'm gonna build in today's video wasn't actually meant to have its own video. I was just gonna build it on stream and then never have to talk about it again. But then a couple of quite predictable David mistakes happened. The first one was I made an assumption about parts compatibility, which meant that once I had everything ready for the build, I couldn't actually plug any of the capture cards into the system. Um, and then the second mistake was I broke a graphics card on stream. We're just, I'm just gonna ignore it. We're just gonna pretend like nothing happened there. I'm gonna have to ghetto mod a fan into that cooler now. So in today's video, I'm gonna fix that stuff and we're gonna finish the build. For my streaming capturing PC, I had a couple of requirements that kind of fed into each other to create the compatibility problem that I had, which meant I couldn't finish building the PC on the stream. Requirement number one, I wanted to be able to capture a signal up to 4K 60 frames per second while passing it through so that I could use the thing while capturing it and I wanted to be able to capture a couple of camera angles as well while capturing the thing, which meant that I needed a couple of capture cards. Luckily, Corsair is one of like three companies that actually replies to my emails. Uh, so I went, hey, you guys make capture cards. Would you mind sending a couple over for a build? And they very kindly did. They sent over a 4K60 Pro and a Camlink Pro, uh, which are two awesome capture cards that I'm really excited about, but I kind of misjudged what PCIe interface they used. Which brings me to requirement number two. Requirement number two, I wanted the system to be as small as possible so that it didn't take up as much space, uh, which meant I was gonna use my favorite motherboard form factor, MATX, which also meant I could reuse the case from the Lenovo Leg Ion pre-built. So I bought an AM4 MATX motherboard and got everything ready for stream and on stream realized that actually the capture cards use PCIe 4X. Oh no, this is not 1X. Not 1X like other add-in cards, I guess was my logic there. I don't know why I didn't check that, but they, they didn't fit in PCI 1X slots. And unfortunately, I couldn't find an AM4 MATX motherboard that actually supported two 4X PCIe slots and a 16x graphics card, which meant that if I wanted to use my trusty old Ryzen 7 3700X for this capture system, I, I had to move to an ATX system, which solves problem number one. And here is the Savage 1660 Super in question, which you can see terrible things happen to it, and I may or may not have accidentally ripped the the cables out of the fan connector, it's still actually in the connector on the PCB. And the most embarrassing part of all of this is it actually happened live on stream. Now I could try and surgically remove this connector and then solder this back on there and it, it, it's, it's perfectly fixable. But what's the fun in that? Why don't we upgrade the fan in there? But before we, we sort out the whole heatsink situation, let's just have a quick closer look at the PCB because it is hilariously OEM-y. As you can see, it is, a, it is a tiny little PCB with a bunch of stuff missing on it. I'm assuming that it's so that they can use the same PCB for higher end models and they can just kind of solder the extra bits of memory and power delivery on there. And then another weird thing about this PCB is that only one of the memory modules was lucky enough to be endowed with a thermal pad. Not entirely sure why that is. Maybe it's a comment on classism, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is put thermal pads on all of them if I have enough of this thickness of thermal pad. Now initially I was just gonna use a full fat Noctua NFF12 on here. The thing with that though is that um, they don't quite line up very well. So what I did instead was buy one of these super cute little NFA914 fans, which not only is a more appropriate size for the heatsink, it's also narrower, which means hopefully this fan won't get in the way of any of the capture cards that we're gonna put in the system, which was a genuine concern with the full fat F12. The first thing that concerns me a bit here is that we've got a pretty big gap in airflow here, 
on both sides actually because that's where the stock fan normally fits in right so in order to make this work well i may do a little bit of a duct tape funnel not enough to actually block all of these fins because they do need air moving over them um, but just a little bit of tape to block off that just spillage there. So we'll do that later. But first, let's figure out how to actually get the fan on here. And what better way is there to do this than cable ties? And that seems like a relatively well-attached fan, you know? All it needs to really do is hang upside down and blow air. It doesn't need to be load-bearing, right? So, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's pretty good. And now the final thing we need to do is get some duct tape going. And there we go. Hopefully that's a, a not entirely useless solution to this problem. It should be okay because it's not like this is particularly high resistance. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping it, it'll help at least just a little bit. Yeah, I'd say that that's not too bad. Uh, if you look in between the actual heatsink and the PCB, it doesn't look like this cable tie is actually making contact with anything, and um, it's not conductive, hopefully. So yeah, I think we should be okay. This should be a functioning contraption, maybe. Um, or, or it'll cause a fire. Either way, it'll be exciting. I mean, that looks pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. And if you kinda hang it upside down, the fan doesn't fall off. Now all that's left to do is build my streaming PC. For this build, I think I'm gonna use my trusty old Corsair RM550X. Uh, Corsair did send over a 750 watt version of this unit for the build, but I don't think I need that much power for this build, and then I can just use that power supply for something else. I think this unit makes a lot more sense. So let's hook it up, fire up the system to see if everything works, and then drop it in the case. Um, another reason that I'm test firing it is because I got these power cables from a bin in my office, I'm not 100% sure that they're Corsair modular power cables, which would be really bad, um, but I am 98% sure, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure enough to, to test fire it all. So let's, let's just see, like that, and then there's a button. Okay, that's a, that's a very good start. Nothing immediately exploded. And that beautiful green boot LED is all we were looking for. So now we can power it off and move all these components into the case. Exciting! In terms of the case, I'm gonna use this Corsair 220T, I think it's called, for two reasons. The first one is it's quite small for an ATX case, and the other reason is I, I had one lying around and I didn't want to have to buy another case. Now we're definitely not gonna go crazy in terms of benchmarks today. I just wanna see how that graphics card's holding up temperature-wise with that uh, special little cooler arrangement that we have there. The system's a bit noisier than I'd like considering that it's gonna pretty much always be running in the background. So I may change out those stock uh, Corsair fans. Okay, um, the temperatures are, are climbing. <laughs> They're definitely getting close to 
to 70 degrees Celsius very quickly. We're only about a minute into the match, which means the temperatures on the 1660 Super are already higher than they were in the stock configuration in the Leg Ion system. Um, I, I was expecting it to do better than this. Now, bear in mind, this is a very unrealistic use case for this GPU. Uh, it's not going to be sitting at 100% utilization because I'm not going to be gaming with it. It's pretty much a video out and an NVENC encoder at this point. Oh, those those temperatures are, are getting hot pretty quickly. We're, we're hitting 80 degrees Celsius now. That's not ideal. This is after about 10 minutes. Let me quickly play around with the fan speed and uh, we'll see how much of a difference that makes. A few moments later. Okay, we're about seven minutes in and clearly this GPU mod a la David is, is not a good idea uh, for gaming at least. I'm, I'm gonna keep it this way for a bit and see how it, how it handles my use case. Like I mentioned earlier, there's not really gonna be gaming happening with this system. So uh, yeah, this kind of extended 100% load situation is not something that is not something that we're, we're gonna have to deal with. So it, it should be fine. And on that sad note of pathetic failure, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, bye-bye.